Welcome to Naresh High Technologies. This is Ram Chandan. In the last video, we did talk about how static data is loaded by the JVM as well as how static data is initialized by the JVM. That means we did learn two phases of static data that is static loading phase and the one is static initialization phase. Now in today's class we did talk about how non-static data is going to be loading and how non-static data is going to be initialized. Hafjai here static data is going to be loading and initialization exactly one time by the JVM. The reason is JVM is going to be load dot class file exactly one time. But if you comes to the non-static data the situation is very different. The reason is non-static data is going to be loading and initialized meanwhile of object creation. Meanwhile of object creation. For one particular class we can create multiple objects. Now whenever we creating any object for any class automatically all the non-static data is going to be loading as well as what initialized. For example, if we are going to be create 10 variables or 10 objects for one particular class. So, 10 times non-static data is going to be loading as well as initialized. So, let me first highlighting how many types of non-static data do we have in our Java language. Here non-static data means uh, instance maybe we can call as instance data or we can call as instance programming elements. Now here let me write non-static uh, programming elements or data. Mainly non-static data classified into non-static variables, non-static uh, methods, non-static uh, blocks as well as what uh, constructors. Mainly non-static data classified into non-static variables, non-static methods, non-static blocks as well as uh, constructors. So, whenever we creating an object for a particular object all this data is going to be loading as well as what are initialized. So, first uh, non-static data loading phase after that once successfully completion of the loading phase then control going to where non-static uh, initialization phase. phase. These are the two phases meanwhile of object creation executed. Now the first one if data is non-static variable data is non-static variable JVM will provide memory and fill it with default value. Next one if the data is a non-static block JVM will read heading of the block and place it into memory that is what your non-static block. If the data is non-static method then what happened? JVM will read heading of the method. JVM will read heading of the method and place it into memory. If the data is a constructor, then JVM will doing what here? Same thing. Heading will be read. A constructor heading will be read and place it into the memory. This is what exactly non-static loading phase. After successfully completion of the entire non-static loading phase, then control goes to where non-static initialization phase. In the non-static initialization phase, what I find? If the data is non-static variable, then default values, then default values will be replaced with original, original or actual data. Everything I am going to be show you programmatically just a minute and after that non-static block. If the data is a non-static block JVM is going to be execute. 
if the data is non static method not executed if the data is a constructor what happen again not execute not execute yesterday we did talk about like in the last uh, video we did talk about uh, no method will be executed automatically if you want to execute we need to call explicitly otherwise by defaultly no method will be executed so once a successfully completion of the initialization phase automatically control goes to where constructor note point is after successfully completion of the non static loading phase and non static initialization phase then control goes to finally constructor once a constructor is executed successfully we can say that object is successfully created and initialized we can say that object is successfully created and initialized so here one more quick review on top of this point whenever we creating an object jvm internally doing two things those are what here non static loading phase and initialization phase so in the loading phase variables providing the memory filled with what default value blocks heading will be read by the jvm constructor method heading will be read placed into the memory constructor heading will be read placed into the memory if you comes to the initialization phase what happen default value will be replaced with original value if it is a block executed if it is a method not executed if it is a constructor not executed after successfully completion of the non static loading phase and non static initialization phase then only control goes to constructor once constructor is successfully executed we can say object is successfully created and initialized so here now whatever the points we learn theoretically now i am going to be show you all these points as and what here programmatically how to develop a program on top of this uh, content very simple let me take one class public class one class name like uh, non static phases now in java standard edition if you want to execute any program from 1.7 onwards especially from 1.7 onwards we required main method so here i have main method main method is what static now after that i am writing one uh, variable if i have not declared any variable with the static keyword that is comes under non static so in instead of writing value i am calling one method let me write method here so here whenever we calling any method in the initialization place that method must and should be written some value that value is what int why i am taking int here the reason is my destination variable type is what int so this value and this value must and should be compatible now after that thing one normal user friendly statements what is that m1 method now if any method having return type that method must and should be ended with return statement here i am writing like what here triple one now i return one non static variable as well as i return one non static method now i am taking one uh, non static block we can also called as instance block now observe here if any block doesn't containing any static keyword that is comes under what non static block here i am simply i am writing like system dot out dot print line non static block one user friendly statements after that let me take one constructor that is what uh, non static uh, phase so this is our constructor here i am writing system dot out dot print ln constructor i am writing now this is what our program so first i am writing main method later i am writing what here variable this is the first this is the second this is what here third and this is what uh, fourth and finally here i am writing what here fifth one now whenever we loading dot class file from secondary memory to primary memory 
JVM always concentrate on static data. Now, first static loading phase is going to be started. First phase. So, first JVM is going to be concentrated whether it is the static data or not. Yes, public static wide main. This is the static data. In the static data, what happen? JVM will read the setting and place it into the memory. And after that, the control goes to where here? Second one. What is this? Non static data. In the static loading phase, non static data is going to be skipped. After that, this is non static block. It is also skipped. After this, this is constructed. It is also part of the non static. This is also skipped. After this, the control is coming to here. This is also what here? Skip. So, once all the statements will be executed, then static loading phase is successfully completed. Then control goes to where? Static initialization phase. In the static initialization phase, no method will be executed. So, this method main method is not executed. After that, control goes to the second statement. This is the non static, and this is non static, this is non static, this is also non static. So, all these four statements are going to be skipped. So, once successfully static initialization phase completed, then control goes to where main method. What we have in the main method? In the main method, just I am writing system dot out dot printl and main. So, our output is what here? Main method. So, but uh, we are writing non static variable, non static block, non static uh, nothing but constructor, non static method. Why these are not executing? The reason is when the non static data is going to be loading and initialized, meanwhile of object creation. Meanwhile of object creation. So, how can we create an object? How can we create an object? Ja generally, in Java, there are different ways to create an object. The first one is new keyword, second one is new instance method, third one is factory method. Again, factory method we have two types like uh, static factory method and non static factory method, and the fourth one is a deserialization, and the fifth one is what cloning. So, these are the different ways to create an object. Here, as of fundamental videos, I am going to be take like uh, by using new operator. Now, after SOP, after SOP, I am writing new NSP, new NSP, this is what. Uh, object creation statement. In coming videos, I am going to be talk about what is object and what is the real time examples do we have related to object and what happen internally meanwhile of creating an object those things we will see in the coming videos. Just here I am creating one object new NSP. So, whenever we creating an object in Java, so, we our control is available in the main method. In the main method, first statement what happened? Main method, SOP main method as it is, it will print it on the console. In the second statement, I am creating an object. So, first statement is main method. Second statement is what? Creating an object. Now, under the main method, I am creating an object. Whenever we creating an object in Java, the control is going to again the first statement of uh, class nothing but non static loading phase is going to be started non static loading phase is going to be started so what we have in the non static loading phase first main method whenever we talks about non static don't be concentrate on static as well as right, right now where exactly our control is available within the main method only na? so leave it about the main method then control goes to where next what is this non static? So, in the loading phase, JVM only concentrate on up to equal operator, nothing but the part which we have left side of the equal operator. Then, what happened? JVM will provide the memory for A and fill it with a 0. After that, control goes to where here? Non static block. Read the heading and place it into the 0. After that, control goes to where here? Non static constructor, nothing but simply constructor. Read the heading and place it into the memory. After that, control goes to where? Int m1 method. Read the heading and place it into the where here? Memory. So, these things happen in the where non static loading phase. Once a successfully completion of the non static loading phase, then control goes to where non static initialization phase. Let me take this point as an fourth, after that fifth, after that sixth. Now, in the sixth point, what happened? 
if the variable is uh, non static so default value will be replaced with uh, original value so what is the use of the equalizer operator we are going to be assign something into a but uh, are we having any value here no we have method calling method calling means uh, we are calling to method so control going to where your m1 method then what happen m1 method is going to be executed in the m1 method what type of output we have m1 method after that what we have return triple one so what is the use of the return statement it is not only forward the control but also holding what here value what is the value here triple one the triple one will be placed into where here m1 method m1 method will be replaced method calling will be replaced with what triple one the triple one will be placed into where here a nothing but zero will be replaced with what here triple one after that the control goes to where non static block so if the in the in, in the non static initialization phase the data is non static block automatically it is going to be executed so here output is what non static block after that what we have constructor not executed after that what we have method not executed maybe you people having the doubt like previously m1 method is executed but not right now executed why the reason is previously we are calling the m1 method that's why executed but here not calling so it will not executed so already we did learn in the last video like whenever we calling the method then only method will be executed otherwise uh, automatically not executed Who, what are the things are going to be executed automatically blocks are executed automatically now after successfully completion of the m1 method successfully completion means not executed basically so after that there is no statement now so yes non static uh, initialization phase is also completed once non static initialization phase successfully completed at finally control goes to where your constructor at finally control goes to where constructor what we have in the constructor svp of constructor constructor will be printed on the console so finally constructor will be executed once constructor will be executed successfully we can say object is successfully created and instantiated this is what internal flow of object creation or uh, we can say like uh, how jvm is loading and initializing the non static data this is the phase exactly so a quick review whenever we creating an object for any particular class then only non static loading phase and initialization phase is going to be happen otherwise not happen in entire program so for example if i am creating one more object like new non static phase new nsb one more object i am creating then what happen these steps are going to be repeated these steps are going to be repeated one more time again one more two objects i am creating what happen again 5 6 7 steps are going to be executed two more times this is what exactly non static loading phase and initialization phase in the next video i am going to be talk about what is object creation why should we go for the object creation whenever we creating an object what happen internally that type of interesting issues we will see in the next video i hope you enjoy this video thank you